soon as you say recording, my, my brain says cigarette. So I was feeling real good. I smoked. I had this whole like thing in mind. I'm gonna smoke and then I'm gonna ride on the back of this motorcycle and I'm gonna listen to this book CD that says these really profound things and like helps to release parts of yourself that pain you sometimes. <laughs> and, yeah, this is gonna be great. Basically, I'm just gonna be able to sit there and not have anything to focus on but healing myself via the book. Via. <laughs> right. So, then, the motorcycle didn't start. And then suddenly I was like, oh. And I started to feel really confined because I started to see that everything I had imagined just happening was actually not going to happen at all. And I had to come to terms with that. My expectations had gotten too sucked up. So I thought it wasn't starting, and then and the helmet started to seem very confining. <laughs> it's already tight as it is, and it's already something I have to come to terms with. But at that point, it was just... And then I had headphones on, too, and it was like... <laughs> it was like, oh, man, I just... I felt like, like my head was just, like, surrounded. And it literally was surrounded. And I was trying to communicate, but I didn't really want to help. Because I didn't want to put any attention towards it. I got my attention ready for something entirely different. You know, I'm going to get down to the... Wh whatever that would be that I was about to do with the music and... So then... I started walking a bit with the motorcycle. I started pushing it. And then suddenly these dogs came up to the fence and they were like... Bah, 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 bah. It was like non-stop. Like, they did not stop barking. They, they, they were, like, in such a rage that they didn't need breath. They just get wet and wet. And they were jumping on the fence. And it smelled of their poop really bad. And I was like, I think we should move somewhere else. We need to move somewhere else. And then, like, there was a, a really run-down screen door. And there was a big hole in it. And this white trash woman stuck her head out of the big hole in the screen door and said, Rah! And then and then the dogs silenced. And I loved that woman for that second. <laughs> so then we kept walking, you know, up around the corner. And he asked me if I wanted to push the motorcycle and try to start it. And I didn't, but I said, okay, I'll try. And then if I do that, I'll feel, like, really relieved and, like, I don't have to pay attention to anything. But it didn't work. And I just had to walk it back. And then he said, oh, the gas thing is whatever it was. And then I changed, or you changed the gas thing, and I started to get hope again, like, all right, maybe, actually, we might be able to go on a motorcycle ride. And I might be able to kind of just go numb and listen to music and smoke my cigarette and, you know. But then it didn't start again. It was like click, 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 click. And then for a moment I, I thought, why is she getting my hopes up like this? But then before I'd even finished the thought, I was like, of course it's not her fault. Those are some of the tricks you're going to do to you. But... Yeah, so then, after that, <laughs> this isn't funny, because this is very serious. Uh, so then after that, you know, I realized I had, like, gloves and an iPod and stuff in my pocket and some sunglasses. And my pocket is really small, so it was, like, really cramped. I really don't like cramped pockets. 
when I'm feeling like slightly anxious, if my pockets are really cramped with kind of stuff, it just it makes me feel more anxious than I previously did. It begins to overwhelm me, you know. My cigarette went out. That mud looks nice. I don't know.